In this video, we will see how to move a widget. We will see multiple examples, simple ones such as how to smoothly move a widget from point A to point B, and more complex ones such as how to follow a semicircle. Hello and welcome to this How to Touch JFX video. My name is Gaetan and today we will see several ways to move and animate your widgets. Here you can see the result that we will achieve in this video. First, a linear motion with the star, then a bouncy animation with the pine cone, and finally, a circular motion with the sun and the moon. This video is split in three parts. First, we will see how to use the built in interaction to quickly move from point A to point B. Then, we will see how to use the move animator mixing to get more control over the movement. And finally, we will see how to use the handle tick event function to get a fully customizable movement. The simplest way to move a widget is to use the built in interactions. It allows you to get a quick movement and is usually enough for most projects. We will animate the star image. To do so, we'll fetch the click of the user with the flex button. We will use the trick that we saw in the last video by modifying the border. Now we can create the interaction, trigger on the button click, and for action, we'll use move widget. Now we need to know where we want the widget to end up. So it's about 550 and 75. and it has to be the star image. The duration will be 1000 in milliseconds, so that's whole second. Let's try. Amazing, we see the movement, but it's not very smooth, so let's add an easing equation. Sign on the out. Way better. Now we want to reset the position. So we're going to allow to trigger another interaction. And we will create a new interaction. It will be triggered by the end of the first interaction. And we will move the widget back to its original position at 300 minus 30. No need a duration, we want it to be instant. Great, that's exactly what we want. In about a minute, we made a smooth animation using interaction. Usually it's enough, but we might be limited. So let's see how to use the move animator widget. Using an interaction to move a widget actually creates a move animator, but we are limited in how much we can use it. So let's actually use one in the code to get full control over it. To do so, we'll take our pinecone image and activate the move animator. We want the pinecone to move like this. So we need an easing equation in x that is linear and an easing equation in y that is bouncing. Now we also want to fetch the click of the user. So let's add a flex button and hide it. We want to create an interaction just to call a function. So button is clicked, flex button two, and call new virtual function. We'll call it function pine cone. Now let's generate code and see what it looks in Visual Studio Code. We will have to open GUI, then source, screen one, and the view. And same for the include, we want the screen one and the view. Now we have the view CPP and view HPP. We have to declare the function here and also define it in the CPP. Great, now we have to fill the function. Let's look at the move animator that was created by the interaction. It's in generated GUI, source, and screen view base. 
There it is, that's all we need. So let's copy paste it and then modify it. We want to change the image and we want to change the parameters. The first method is used to call an action at the end of the animation. In our case, we don't want to call anything, so we just clear it. The second function is used to start the animation. The first parameter is the end position in X, second parameter is the end position in Y, the third parameter is the duration in ticks. The simulator uses 60 ticks per second, so we keep it at 60. And then the two last parameters are the easing equation in X and Y. So let's modify the parameters. The final parameter in X is 200, in Y 440. We said we keep 60 ticks, and then the easing equation first in X it has to be linear. So let's take linear non-easing. And in Y, it has to be bouncing. We want to bounce at the end of the animation only. Let's also set the image visible at the beginning. Now we will set the image invisible at the beginning and let's see how it looks now. Great, just like that, we are able to use a different easing equation on the X and the Y axis. Using the move animator in the code allows us for a lot of flexibility. But if we want even more flexibility, we'll have to use the handle tick function and set the X and Y coordinate every tick. The last method is the most complex, but it allows a lot of control. We will see how to use the handle tick function to move widget using the methods such as setX or setXY. In this last example, we want to move the sun across the screen and we want to change from night to day and from day to night. To do so, we need to implement the handle tick function in the code. So let's just do that. In screen1view.hpp, we have to add the function. We also want to add a counter as a variable. Now let's implement the handle tick event function. The handle tick event function is called at every tick, so 60 times per second. We want to use the counter to set the position, so we will increment it every tick. We will reset it at 2000 because the screen is 800 pixels, so we want to make sure the sun has crossed the whole screen then the moon, and that's about 2,000 pixels in total. This is the basic code that you need to implement a counter from 0 to 2,000. Now we have to set the position of the sun and the moon based on the value of the counter. First, we'll invalidate both images at the beginning and at the end of the function. Now we will modify their position using the setX method. We offset the sun by 200 because it starts outside of the screen and the mood by 1200 because it has to come once the sun has crossed the screen. Let's see the result in the simulator. It's very slow, but it seemed to work. So we're going to fix that. This time we'll use a counter of 500, but we multiplied that value by four. This way we get the same behavior but it's four times faster. Now we get something much faster. Let's check that it actually loops. Once the moon is gone, the sun should appear, amazing. Now let's focus on the sky, changing the value of the sky based on the value of the counter. Once the counter is halfway through, we should set the night container visible and invalidate it. Once the counter has reached 500, it will be resetted, and we also have to set the day container visible and invalidate it. With the small addition, the sky should reflect the position of the sun and the moon. It's a bit rough, but it works. I want to improve the movement of the sun and the moon by making them move in a semi-circle. 
That's the whole point of the handle tick event. You can do anything you want. I'm not gonna code the semicircle with you. It's a bit more complex and I don't want to explain it. So I'm just going to show it as it is. This is what I came up with. It's basically the same code. We invalidate the moon and the sun at the beginning and at the end. Once we halfway through, we swap the container day and the container night, also when we reset the container. Except that this time, I'm not only setting the x, I'm also setting the y by using the cos and sin to get the semicircle effect. Let me show you how it actually works. Here I set some defines. Basically, the y center is the radius of the circle, so let's lower it to 200 and we will see the results. Now we see the full movement of the sun and the moon. The radius has been lowered, so we see how it behaves. First, we see the sun, then we see the moon, and they reset once they're done. This was way more work, but it's definitely worth it. You can do anything you want with the Antiltic event. It's the best solution when you need custom behavior, but if you don't, just stick to the move animator or the interactions. In this video, we have created a good looking UI by dynamically moving our widgets. We have seen three ways of moving our widgets. First, the star by using an interaction. That's the simplest, but that's also the most limited. Second, the pinecone widget, where we use the move animator mixing, which allows us for more freedom. And finally, the sun and moon rotation around Earth, where we use the handle tick function to get a custom behavior. With those few methods, you too can make a good looking UI by integrating those three methods in your GUI. To learn more, check the links in our description. You will find our forum, our website documentation, and the link to this playlist. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next one.